Hello and welcome to the grand finale, part 19 of the uh, Wellington build. Um, in this one, I literally just demask it. Um, in the previous one, between the previous one and this one, um, I did lay over a quick um, uh, matte varnish across the whole thing um, just to seal everything in all the weathering and stuff like that. I didn't video it because all you see me is going around with the airbrush like this and nothing really happening on the model. So yeah, that's what happened between. Um, all I'm doing now is demasking, so taking all the window masks off, and the last bit to do will be gluing in the Astrodome. Um, if you want to see more build series like this, uh, subscribe to the channel, um, hit the bell notification as well, and that will alert you when new videos will come up from this channel. Um, <clears throat> at the end, I ask a couple of questions about what you guys want to see. So it's not a particularly long video, but if you hold up to the end and uh, listen to me blabbing on a little bit, um, leave your answers down in the comments because um, I kind of want to know what you guys want to see whether you want to see stuff like this or uh, like quite extended builds where I, I film it from start to finish pretty much no break in between um, or whether you want something a bit more of a breakdown so uh, we'll see a whole build come together over about a 10 minute video or so anyway I hope you enjoyed the video and thank you for watching So that was the final piece um, that I've just glued onto the brand new Airfix Vickers Wellington. That was the Astrodome going on, and she's done. It's only taken, I don't know what part this is, because uh, I'm still editing the footage for the last few, but it's, it's taken quite a bit of doing. 
it's been, certainly been an experience recording it at the same time uh, every step um, yeah anyway I'm going to do a bit of a talk about the kit I'm going to do a little spin around with it so if you've got this far with it like me well done thank you As you can see, I've uh, now finished a Wellington build. Um, overall, great kit. I uh, definitely recommend it 21. Um, it's certainly a lot more detailed than the old Tall Airfix one. Um, I, don't, I can't really speak for the Trumpeter ones or the Italy ones, but from what I've heard, it is more detailed than it. Uh, the inside is a great build. Um, it is such a shame that you basically yeah, cover up most of it. Um, I'm sure there'll be some cool builds out there in the future where people have somehow exposed it. Um, one thing I've got going on in my head, I don't know how much work it would be, is to actually replicate uh, that. Well, since the marking scheme comes for the Brooklyn's um, Wellington, so that's the one that's on display at the Brooklyn's mu uh, Museum of, I think it's aviation and motoring or something like that. Um, so a lot of that Wellington is exposed for the framework, a lot of the skin isn't there. And I was thinking, would it be feasible to dremel out and drill and file out all of the canvas detail and expose all the framework um, to do that? And I know it'd be a hell of a lot to do, but it'll be damn cool if it worked. Um, I don't know whether it'd be worth thirty quid and potentially wreck a kit on it. Kit on it. Um, so, like I said, I'm speaking about the build. So yeah, it goes together quite well. Um, no major issues. The landing gear was a bit different to normal um, I generally fit my landing gear after I've done the main painting before I seal the whole lot and start weathering um, before I gloss it and seal it with varnish um, what I did find is it generally fit it beforehand or you can leave the bulkhead that sits behind the front of the nacelle near the cowlings off so you can push that pin in the right place and settle it correctly otherwise you're pretty much trying to feed it in blind from the top um, that was a bit fiddly. Um, aside from that, the side panels, I mentioned it in one of the parts earlier on. Um, I, I feel there may be an issue with the instructions. I have sent effort a message, but I haven't been anything back, so I might be wrong. Um, I just found that with the trapezoid shape, it's slightly skewed like that. And the sides that it suggests opposite fit better than the one it actually tells you to in the in the, uh, the actual instruction they found there's a bit of an overlap using the one for the correct side that they suggest uh, and also they seem to sit quite deep um, thinking about it going back and hindsight's a wonderful thing I'd probably fit them at the stage where I'm doing the inside um, that way you can push them out a little bit to try and make them a bit more flush I found they, they, they sank in a touch too much um, so yeah that, that's probably another one of um, RTFI read the instructions and do a bit more planning in advance um, not that I didn't do that it just the hindsight again uh, so definitely when I do this kit again not so much if when because I do want to do another one um, I'll probably take that into account and uh, do that in the future um, future builds on this one I'll definitely be getting another kit of this um, it was awesome to do so much detail um, extra deek will do a decent set most of them in the same sort of colour scheme but they do a desert one on there as well which I'm definitely interested in doing and as I mentioned in say the review and one of the other parts where I was looking at the fuselage I found a lot of um, uh, little pinholes that Airfix leave in for when you're going to drill out for uh, sort of uh, mounting, uh, what do you call them, aerials and things like that on the kit from the outside. And uh, I found two rows of four on either side, the, the rear fuselage, and there was 
the uh, there was another one as well. The on the rear section of the fuselage there was the ones at the top dead centre for the um, the telegraph pole aerials as well. So it definitely suggests they're going to be doing a coastal command uh, like anti sub maritime patrol version at some point in the future. Whether they're doing it is a different matter, but it's, the stuff's there. So you may be able to convert it if you've got the parts to do it. I mean, I guess if you've got the Whitley that they've done, you could use the parts off that to put on there. Um, and you just need to get hold of the decal scheme uh, and paint scheme to work to, really, um, to do that. One other thing I found with it as well. Um, it was, it's going to sound really strange, uh, but this was actually one of the hardest kits to weather that I've done. And when I say weather, I mean my, my weathering section of the build is generally post-gloss varnish, post-decals, and then I, I start weathering. Then I start applying panel washes uh, across the surface in panel lines um, and streaking back away from there. So I'll concentrate a bit on there and, and then streak it back so it looks like the build that's come out of the panel line, etc. Um, there's no panel lines on the kit, except in a very few areas which were... Uh, metal sheeting like the cowlings uh, and a, a few bits around the sort of fuselage uh, areas. Now, I thought about washing and leaving the recesses a darker tone, um, but it was far too pronounced, and um, I didn't really want to do it like that. Um, it sounds daft, but you, you leave a dark wash in there, the scallops between the, the, the ribbon where the canvas has stretched and gone taut in there. Uh, it would make them too striking, too too obvious. Um, and if I'm honest with you, when you look at the kit, the light that you look at it in and, the t and take any pictures with, um, pretty much leave shadow and effect in there anyway. So I, I wouldn't really worry about trying to leave them darker or even, um, say, t running a miller tape across every single one of them in a crosshatch pattern and then dusting the whole model with a dark colour. I, I, I feel you make that contrast too great if you did that. Um, what else? Oh yeah, the uh, collector rings at the front of the um, cowling. Um, if I'm honest with you, it would be nice if they were moulded as a separate piece um, instead of actually as the cowling. It would have given a bit more separation between the main engine cowling to the collector ring um, and made it look like it's a separate part. I, I found it quite... I mean, I did quickly run the... Um, panel line tool around there to try and break it up a little bit but I, I found it um, I found it just didn't look too separate enough as, as like it was a separate piece that was on there um, but aside from that though great kit I definitely recommend getting it um, go out and buy it I'm not sponsored by FX but go out and buy it um, yeah it certainly is a good build um, and an enjoyable one as well took quite a bit of time as well and it's been nice actually um recording this and sharing it with you guys i've had quite a lot of feedback from this uh quite a lot of views on the videos as well and um yeah in in general it's, it's been quite an experience videoing it every single step i think i missed out the masking uh gloss varnish and um the matte varnish at the end as well uh just because all you see is going around with an airbrush and nothing really changing on the model but yeah no thank you for those who have managed to put up with me for I think there'll be about 20, God knows how much there's about five six hours of footage that I've compressed uh, from about 25 maybe more hours so yeah thanks to the guys who have actually watched every episode um, you're the real heroes um, and let me know in the comments whether you'd like me to do another build like this whether you'd like me to do another build like this again in the future where I basically document it from start to finish um, as I have done with this one or you'd like more builds where I kind of compress it down to a couple of episodes where I show the inside, do a bit of a talk about it um, and do it a bit more, the, the video and sort of a bit more spread out, show a bit of the painting and then the final piece at the end. Um, let me know what you think, what you'd actually like to see as well. Like I said, I, I, I do this for you guys as well so it's not really... I'd rather provide content that you guys would. I'd rather provide content that you guys would much rather see, and um, if that's what you'd rather see, then let me know. So, anyway, thank you for watching this build series. Uh, 
I have no idea what I've got coming up next. I think I'm going to be doing a video on airbrushing sometime in the week. Um, mainly look at the different types of airbrush. I know it's been done countless times, but I kind of feel that I need to do my take on it um, and say my words really um, for uh, information purposes. And mainly it's going to be aimed at people that are looking to take the leap from hand painting, from the odour, hairy sticks, and going to the uh, airy sticks. So anyway, thank you for watching and take care.